Now, here's another president who is struggling with the definition of the word terrorist. We told you about Donald Trump. Here's a second one. This president want to, wants to call dissenters terrorists, even those who criticize him on social media. The country is Philippines, the Philippines, and the president is the very controversial Rodrigo Duterte, scratching the scars of history with a law that the United Nations is slamming. The world continues to fight terrorism, but fails to define it. The United Nations has not been able to agree to a definition. Who is a terrorist? In the Philippines, this question is leading to protests. President Rodrigo Duterte is backing a controversial bill that will give him unprecedented power. The power to classify dissenters as terrorists. And the power to detain people for critical social media posts. Duterte's bill has passed both houses of the Congress. It is nearing finalization. The United Nations is protesting. It has released a scathing report. It details human rights violations under President Duterte, including the extrajudicial killing of more than 8,000 people. Even after years of international and domestic criticism, Duterte appears unfazed. He wants to give the police a free hand. This anti-terrorism legislation is so broadly written that it is concerning. The police can arrest and detain people without a warrant. Hold them in custody without charges for 24 days. Duterte's methods are well known. Look at how he won the election in 2016. He pledged to kill 100,000 criminals in the first six months of his term. He promised to dump so many bodies in the Manila Bay that the fish would grow fat. The United Nations report has evidence to show that Duterte did what he promised. Since mid-2016, thousands of people have been killed in the guise of war on drugs. Many claim that the police may have interpreted Duterte's high-level rhetoric as the license to kill. Suspects are forced to make self-incriminating statements or risk facing custodial torture. Most victims in the drug war are young, poor urban males. Duterte calls the Philippines a narco state. The UN disagrees, saying the prevalence of illegal drugs is lower than the global average. So did the war on drugs really need blanket killing? Activists say the anti-terrorism law will only make this bloodier. The fear is that Duterte will appoint the Anti-Terrorism Council. They will suppress free speech and harass critics. In the first four months of the year during the pandemic, political opponents and NGO workers were charged for sedition and perjury. A major media network was forced to stop broadcasting. In the government's defence, extremism was a problem in the country. For five months in 2017, Islamic State militants had seized the southern state of Marawi. The government says it wants to avoid a repeat of that. But Duterte's authoritarian ways are worrying. During the pandemic, he wanted to impose martial law after failing to enforce a lockdown. Martial law has a horrifying history in the Philippines. 13 years of martial law under dictator Ferdinand Marcos denied them basic freedoms. Duterte admires Marcos, calls him his idol, and is now walking in his footsteps. For critics, the message is clear. Face arrest without a warrant and be labelled a terrorist. Bureau Report, Vion, World is One.